Hey everybody, how you doing? It's John Brewer here, South Florida's restaurant guy. And just want to come at you today with some information. I read a great article um, in restaurant design and it relates to bars and, and the function of a bar. And I think it's very clear, uh, you should be very clear when you go into any space uh, that you're going to take over, especially if it's second gen, uh, second generation space and you maybe want to make some changes or you always want to try to brand it as your own. Um, so when you're looking at restaurant bars, what, what do you want to accomplish? Uh, you know, they need to create an energy and a buzz to them. They need to promote social engagement. Uh, they need to integrate and support the overall brand experience. And they should be an attractive alternative space, but at the same time, uh, use the same colors and have the same vibe as the dinner area. One of the challenges is, is to make sure that your diners are not being compromised by the bar area. I know a lot of times you go into a bar area, it's so loud you can't even enjoy a romantic meal if you're with your date or you're with your wife. Uh, so those are things to consider as well. Uh, you know, it's funny, promote social engagement. When I worked at the Hard Rock in, in Vegas, they had a great, great way to promote social engagement. And one of the things they had a thing called the center bar. And what they did was they hooked up microphones and speakers. And so you would be sitting on one end, the bar was a circle, and the circle bar, and it was in the middle, and the bartenders would bartend basically out from there, and you would hear conversations, but you couldn't tell who was doing it. So you, instead of staying in your drink or staying in your own world or staying on your, um, you know, video poker or whatever it may be, you were always kind of looking around making eye contact with other people trying to figure out where this conversation was coming from. Not to mention you heard some pretty interesting conversations. Uh, and you couldn't really make it out. You usually heard voices and you could hear bits and pieces, but it wasn't like you were really, really totally eavesdropping. Anyway, integrate and support the overall brand experience and attractive alternative space. Absolutely. You want to you want to differentiate your bar from your dining area, but at the same time, you know, you need to keep the um, keep the theme and the motif the same. So bars are where new patrons can check out a restaurant without making a commitment. An open kitchen tempts those on the fence to come in and dine, potentially. So the idea is, you know, if you if you want to activate food at the bar and have that experience, I know my wife and I, I love to dine at the bar. And why? Because it's a more intimate experience, if you ask me. It's, um, you know, the bartender's there. It's not like a server that's serving five other tables and they're going into the kitchen and they're leaving. Your bartender, for most, you know, is, is right there. And, you know, it's easy to make drinks and talk to you or it's easier to get things that you may need as a, as a, as a diner. Uh, I love eating at the bar. It's just a better experience for me. I, you know, as a former bartender, I like, I like eating. I like giving the tip to the bartenders. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's a, I just enjoy the experience. I think it's a, it's a more intimate setting. Unless the bar is crazy busy, in which case then I'd love to sit down at the table. Um, another thing you need to think about are the bar materials need to match and be cleanable and or they need to patina well. What do I mean by that? Your bar takes a beating. Uh, bars take a beating, drop glasses, a lot of people, scuffs, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, when I ran a nightclub in, in Vegas, uh, when you look at the club under the daylight, it's not quite as clean as you would hope. You know what I mean? We had guys come through and clean it very hard, but you know, you get ring scuff marks, you get the leather gets beaten up pretty quickly. So one of the things you have to be conscious of when you're building your bar, the materials that you're using is how are these things going to look in the daylight? Because if you're doing a lunch hour, which is what a lot of people are doing, they're constructing the bars in such a way that, okay, so you're not going to do the same volume for lunch that you're going to do for dinner. So they take basically the bar area and make that your cafe, make that your pastry and bakery type setting where you're doing coffees and things like that, kind of a dual purposing of the bar area, which I think is very smart, very smart. You know, one of the things we did in nightclubs as well is that we made it so that we could walls, curtains, whatever. So on a Monday night when maybe we only expected 100 guests to come through as opposed to uh, Saturday night where we had 800 to 1,000 come through, we found a way to make the room smaller, okay? Whether you use curtains, whether you use uh, walls, whatever it may be, portable walls, you want to make, because you want to have, when you don't have that many people, you want to make sure it feels energized rather easily. Uh, and that's one of the things you want to consider. You know, the thing about it, like I was saying about bars, is it has to have an upbeat energy, but at the same time, you don't want to compromise the people that are in for a nice quiet dinner. 
Uh, so that's one of the challenges you have to think of, whether that's dividing or whether that's just kind of maybe putting your deuces on another, you know, further away. There's ways to deal with it. Seating, your hostesses should be very active. You start to figure out where your sweet spots are in the restaurant and where, okay, if you get, you know, size people up at the front, if it's a loud group of six people, put them right next to the bar. They're probably going to be walking in there, you know, especially if they're single or whatever. Um, you know, you want to keep those people together. If it's a couple, older couple, whatever, and they're on a nice quiet dinner, you may want to seat them further away. Thinking about the logistics, think about the experience of the patron dining at the bar. Keep silverware, glassware, bus bins close but out of the way. You don't want it to be obvious, but you want to have that stuff there so it's easy for the bartenders to, uh, to service the customers, also to get the servers to bring the food out. Smooth bar top, something nice and smooth where you can set up a napkin and a table with an ample overhang. You know, you don't want to be eating this way, you want to make sure that they can get their knees underneath and have a nice dining experience. Lighting, the lighting should be good to enhance the food. Sight lines to the kitchen, nothing motivates people to eat like watching guys cook and you see a big flame come up, see a beautiful steak come out, you see guys frenetically, you're thinking about food. So that's another way to kind of activate the thinking process. Bus stations and refrigeration for bar diners, you know, you don't want your, you don't want, you know, you don't want your bartenders to have to go running back out off the bar to go grab the stuff for the guests, come back, put it over there, whether it's roll-ups behind the bar, whatever it may be. You want to make sure that your bartenders are not compromising service by having to deal with um, a diner. Uh, with cocktail press, uh, preparation becoming more intense, one of the things you should think about when you're designing your bar is the bartender. And what you're seeing now is a lot more like a cockpit design. So in the old days, the bar was here. You had your lemons, limes, cherries, whatever, twists. And now with everything that you've got that's being used, all the, all the ingredients, it's more of a, a cockpit, basically. So you want to make sure that you're setting that up for your bartenders to succeed, ease of service. You know, the one thing about the bar is it, it's gonna, it has to be able to be comfortable enough so when you've got the one bartender that's doing lunch that they can maneuver around the bar and get to their guests uh, quickly and then also that same space needs to turn into a high volume, high output, high production nighttime bar as well. So those are your challenges. Um, so, uh, and as far as comfort goes for a bar, you know, you want the little things. I noticed my wife when she goes out, uh, under under bar purse hooks work very well, and when you see those, it's just a great little thing. Also, you know, subtle presence of electronics ports. Uh, you don't want it to be obvious. You don't want a bunch of ha phones hanging out, but you know, to take a little thought and put it into there about where, how can we set this up so that you know people aren't asking the bartender to charge their phones or a way that they can do it at the table. Um, and then the other way, seating. You know, seating is very important. You know, bar bar stools with backs are great. If you're sitting at the bar, if you're the second one back or the third one back and it's busy out, it's a pain in the ass and it kind of divides that. So um, maybe you want to use backless um, bar stools or you know, think more in terms of ergonomics as far as comfort and less in terms of how plush can I make this. Uh, and then using natural bar materials, wood, stone, leather, all these enhance the feelings of a bar. So, you know, think about where does the bar fall in your restaurant? Are you a high-end restaurant where you're not really doing much bar and you just kind of want a place for uh, guests when they're waiting for their table to open up and you only need like eight chairs up there? Or are you a place that activates your bar as the night goes on and come eight o'clock after you've done a gangbuster business, eight, nine o'clock, you're rolling into nine thirty, ten o'clock, your bar your your restaurant trans transitions into more of a bar and you need to be able to um you know, accommodate that particular service as well. Anyway, if you have any thoughts on this, please put it in. This is my ideas on restaurants and bars from an article I read in a restaurant design. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, I am a restaurant broker in South Florida. If you're looking for space or if you have a space, please give me a call, 561-573-7333. My name is John Brewer. I'm called South Florida Restaurant Guy. I work at Native Realty. Everybody take care. Have a great day.